Before I start this video, I wanted to make a quick shout out to the Bobapedia Android app. I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Bobapedia, but there are a lot of Pokemon bios that I put together for this episode, and all of these, including the Tropius one that I showed last time, uh, that I was really able to up my... I guess productivity with this app. I use Bobapedia for the, I say for the majority of my non mechanics research that I do, I do in Bobapedia. So everything that has to do with specific Pokemon, like for Pokemon bios, I go to Bobapedia for. Um, but the website, because of like ads and things, is really slow. But now that they have an Android app, the app. I can just look down at my phone, scroll through information, load it up into my computer, and it's just really great, super efficient. So if you're someone who's into that kind of stuff, like into research and getting into like what makes Pokemon Pokemon, you know, and going in depth on them, I definitely recommend the Bobapedia Android app. I'm assuming that it's either also on the iTunes store or will be at some point in time. But uh, yeah, that's my little pre-intro thing for today. Roll the clip. Crow-gunk, dudes and dudettes. My name is Spidak Podiete, but you can call me Speed for short. And welcome to the next episode of my Pokemon Platinum version walkthrough. Last time around, we fought off our rival Barry right in front of the Pastoria City Gym. And I told you guys that we won't be going into the gym this time. Instead, we'll be taking on Pastoria City's uh, pride and joy, the Great Marsh. Observatory Gate. Uh, let's not waste any time and just go ahead and head right in. I've got tons of notes that i got to go through for this, for this video. Uh, let's go upstairs first. The Great Marsh is like a big safari where you can catch wild Pokemon and things. Uh, well, not and things. You can, uh, yeah, you can you can get items here too. Let's see. Tell me if I'm not imagining this. The Great Marsh's Pokemon seem to be different from the ones yesterday. This is true. Some of the Pokemon will rotate around. There's shallow trains in the marsh called Quick Trains. You should take those if you're going to a deeper area in the marsh. I wonder what's this. Pokemon magazines. <laughs> Mm, just want to see if these guys have anything interesting to say. I'm walking on the bog, you sometimes sink right in. Something pretty cool about it, though. If you turn while you're stuck, sometimes Pokemon may pop out. This is true. We're not going to look out over the Great Marsh. You can see what kinds of Pokemon can be caught and where they are. Alright, so before I look through these binoculars, I should explain how the Great Marsh works a little bit. When I actually go inside, it'll give you a better explanation. But the Pokemon in here rotate daily. And so there's like a certain chance out of 32 that a certain Pokemon will be in each area. So so that technically there's a chance that it could be the same Pokemon in each one. But there are certain Pokemon who are set in stone to be in every area every day. And then a couple will rotate around. So it's partially static but partially changing, which is pretty cool. You know, it's a... It's a safari, so we're going to go out and catch lots of Pokemon. Let's go ahead and take a look through these binoculars and see what Pokemon we might catch. Costs $100, or 100 Poke Dollars. And there's Tangela. Bee Barrel. Seen it. Seen it. Quagsire. I think that's in the back of the Great Marsh. Another Quagsire. Scroopy. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm gonna go over that in a few minutes. All right, but that's all that we were able to see. I'm not actually. I think if you look through it twice, it shows you them. Yeah, it shows slightly different Pokemon. B Barrel, Tangela, Wooper, Tangela. Yeah, that Scroopy is a Pokemon that yeah. It's never set in stone to be in a certain place, so you gotta look around to find it. Howdy! You're playing the Safari game! How would you like to try my game out at the same time? <gasps> what? <laughs> it's a game within a game within a game. It's Gameception. 
The rule, yep, there's only one, is real simple. All you have to do is capture five or more Pokemon in one Safari game. If you do that, she gives the Poketrap matchup checker. You can use that to see if Pokemon are compatible to be left in the daycare together. This is my first Safari game. When I enter, we'll be given 30 Safari balls. Nah, yeah, I can. I'm pretty sure I can. Uh, what's it called? I can explain this pretty well. When we get in there, we're in the Great Marsh, home of the Safari City Safari game. And it's just 500 Poke Dollars for 500 steps. So it's a it's on a timer, but the timer is based on how how many steps you take, not like actual in-game time. So when you press start. Oh, wow! They don't show you your steps. All right. Well, you can on the bottom screen. I think it's like app number. Yeah, if you go to like app number four on your Poketch, you can just count your steps, like set it to zero, and then start counting your steps. See, great much area six. Oh, let's see. I think I want to go to the back. The uh, odd numbered areas are on the left, the even ones are on the right. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, one being all the way at the top, six being all the way at the bottom, or five and six. So let's encounter some wild Pokemon and just not waste any time. Get right into this. All right, Tropius. I talked about this Pokemon last time. Uh, on the bottom screen, oh man, am I really about to do this to myself? Yes, I am. You have four options. What you can do? You have Ball, Bait, Run, and Mud. So Ball is like throwing a Great Ball. Well, it's throwing a Safari Ball, which is basically a Great Ball in disguise. By using bait, this will uh, make a Pokemon more likely to stay. You don't have any Pokemon that you're using to fight, so the Pokemon might just run away from you. And bait is your way of hopefully trying to stop that from happening. Only problem is, by using bait, it makes the Pokemon harder to catch with your po Safari Ball. Uh, you can also run away if you want, uh, or throw mud. Throw mud makes it easier to catch Pokemon, but they're more likely to run away from you. So. It's a, it's a whole game of risk and reward, so if you, uh, I usually just go for throwing a safari ball at the beginning and then bait them after, or mm, I bait Pokemon that are really rare, that's what I do, and then I usually just throw safari balls for the rest of them. If you run out of safari balls, the game ends, so be very cautious of that. Alright, now that I have readjusted my screen. Let's go and throw a Safari Ball, see if we can catch this Tropius. Gotta try and catch five of them. It doesn't have to be five of the same Pokemon. Or it doesn't even have to be five different po- <laughs> It doesn't have to be five different Pokemon. See what I mean? Just throw the Safari Ball and it, it just works. I don't know why, but it just works. I mean, huh. Tropius, the fruit Pokemon. Delicious fruits, scrum dilliumptious, grow out of- around its neck because it always ate the same kind of fruit. <laughs> what if that's actually how life worked? If you just kept eating stuff, you would just grow off of your off of your neck. I'm not gonna nickname it, even though I usually nickname all the Pokemon I catch. Cause there's gonna be so many that it's it's not even like it's not even gonna be efficient usage of our time. But in terms of efficiently using time so this is as good a time as any to start going over wild Pokemon. I'll just be catching stuff and catching stuff, so don't, uh, <laughs> you don't have to pay that much attention to my screen over here in the corner, but Tropius, yeah, we went over this last time, grass flying type, um, it's got an advantage in the gym, learns lots of HMs, uh, still got five weaknesses, so I'm not going to necessarily re recommend this Pokemon, but I will say that it learns five HM moves, so it's pretty useful to have on your team. Now then, two actual new Pokemon, Tangela, yet another grass type. Oh. Uh, you can find it mainly in areas three and four, so that's like the middle section of the Great Marsh. It's pretty offensive with high HP and even higher defense. I, I guess another way you could put it is that it has good physical stats and its HP and defense are high. 
Uh, its abilities can be either Chlorophyll or Leaf Guard. Chlorophyll doubles your speed during Strong Sunlight, and Leaf Guard makes it so that you can't get any status conditions during Strong Sunlight. And when I say Strong Sunlight, I just mean like a Pokemon uses Sunny Day, and then you get the, the sun screen thing comes up like every turn, where it's like, the sunlight is strong. <laughs> or I guess Clear Skies is what it's called in Jap Japan or whatever. Um, it evolves, at, well, it doesn't evolve at a certain level, but it evolves by leveling up on the move Ancient Power. Uh, it learns Ancient Power at level 33, so that's convenient. I'm trying to multitask. I'm trying to be down here and catch Pokemon and talk about this at the same time. It, it learns Ancient Power at level 33, so it's almost like evolving at level 33. But not, I think Tang Tangle is, it definitely has better stats than Tropius does. And I'd say of all the grass types that I'm going to go over, Tangle is probably the best one. Tangle at slash Tangrowth is the name of its evolution. But uh, another Pokemon you can find is Yanma. Yanma is a bug flying type. It's most common in areas 5 and 6, platinum exclusive. Uh, actually, Tangle, Tropius, and Yanma are all platinum exclusives. And Yanma is a fast special attacker. Its ability can be either Speed Boost or Compound Eyes. Speed Boost raises your speed at the end of every turn, and Compound Eyes increases the accuracy of all your moves by 30%. Okay, once it evolves, that if you have the Compound Eyes ability, it will switch to Tinted Lenses. Tinted Lenses makes it so that all of your move, well, your not very effective moves have their power doubled. So if originally the power was half like if originally it was going to do half damage it will double to do one damage if originally it was going to do a quarter damage it will double to half damage that's like not very effective like by like half or you know a quarter and to get that evolution it's just like tangela you level it up while knowing ancient power which it gets to level 33 also just like tangela and it is available in the after game of diamond and pearls so don't worry all you diamond and pearl players you still have a you still have a chance at catching this Pokemon. Um, but other than that, I'd say Yanma's probably the Pokemon on here that has the best move pool. Uh, it's, uh, you know, honestly, it's just a really good Pokemon. Yanma and um, it's the evolution Yanmega. Let's go ahead and take a break from those for a sec. Just so I can focus and move around for a minute. For a minute. You see in quack size, but I don't know. What, yeah, let's see. Sometimes I th like to throw two muds, see if the Pokemon stays. Oh. It's gonna be hard to get every item to Pokeball. If you look really closely, you can tell where there's bog and where there's not bog. Yellow shard. Hmm, this is proving harder than I thought. Oh. Hmm. I think what I might have to do is. Yeah, it looks like what I might have to do is uh, go through once for the items and then come through a second time to try and catch five Pokemon so I can give you, get you guys that Pokech app. It's a blue shard right there. Let's see... It's a Parasol Lady. The trainers in here aren't going to fight you, by the way. Let's see what we got. Another Tropius. Alright. Uh, let's talk about a Pokemon that's not Tropius. If you use a good rod in any of the areas you can catch the Pokemon Barboach. Barboach is a water ground type. Its uh, its stats are not amazing, but its move pool is is a little bit more reconcili reconciliable. Uh, I definitely think Quagsire does better in the move department and the stats department than Barboach does. With the same typing, water ground is good. It's uh, only got one weakness, which is grass. Its ability can be either oblivious, which means it cannot become infatuated, or anticipation, which uh, alerts you if your opponent has a super effective or one-hit KO move in its learn set. 
It allows level 30 into Whiskash, and I mean, like I said, it it's not a bad Pokemon, but I feel like Quagsire just does what Barboach is trying to do a little bit better. And then there's a few Pokemon that are rotating, or at least that's how I wrote it down in my notes. This just means that the Pokemon, it's... It's here, but it can rotate and exist in different areas on different days. And that's what the 1 in 32 chance I was talking about earlier is all about. And the first one is Carnivine. Carnivine's a grass type with a levitate ability, which means it takes zero damage from ground type moves. Which is cool when you first think about it, but then you realize, oh wait. Ground type moves are not very effective against grass types anyway. Uh, I don't know what would have been a way to reconcile this. I think it would have been cool if they gave it a new ability that, like, I don't know, made it immune to, like, grass and poison type moves. They could call it, like, um, not acid armor, because that's already something, but they'd call it a... I don't know, actually. <gasps> Skroopy! Hey! This is the next Pokemon that I was going to talk about. Uh, Skaroopy, poison bug type, it's, uh, here, let me just scroll down to my notes really quick, there we go, Skaroopy, poison bug type, fast and defensive with high attack stat, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe use some bait to try and keep it here for a second, it's, uh, abilities can be either battle armor, which protects Skaroopy from critical hits, or sniper, which makes your critical hits do three times damage instead of two times damage. Slight note, it uh, its move pool is pretty poor when you first catch it, so uh, be aware and conscious of that. Use TMs and move tutor moves for sure. It can uh, it can even it even gets access to the Fang moves by taking it to the move reminder after you evolved into Drapion. So there's a good opportunity to do that. And uh, I figured so a couple of things I forgot to mention about Carnivine. Yeah, let me just send that away. Carnivine, it's a uh, it's stats. It's it's slow and offensive, which is not a bad combination necessarily, but it um but it, it the only offensive grass type move it knows is Vine Whip, and that's until level forty seven. So like I just I just don't understand. Like Game Freak, why? <laughs> um at level forty seven it does get power whip, but that's a little very far off from the level that you catch it at. Most of the Pokemon you find here will be around level thirty, so They'll have their respective, you know, grass type moves and things, which is cool. Ooh, I think I might actually be able to catch this Pokemon. So it's a, uh, it's up to you as to what you take from the Pokemon here. There's some definitely some good ones. So I mean, I'm not gonna tell you, uh, I'm not gonna tell you otherwise. But yeah, that is just about it. And then I'm thinking my time is just about up. So let's try and wrap up this catching, and then I think I might try and. I might be able to record like the next three videos in one sitting because there's not new Pokemon. Yes! Uh, yes! Yes! <laughs> there's not new Pokemon for a little while. Let's go ahead and catch that Uber. And I think that makes it five. And. Oh, Yama. Oh, nice to meet you, sir. Let's see if I can, or ma'am. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Let's see if I can catch it. See, there's a lot of items in here, so I'm trying to think how I can possibly get all of them. Oh, nice. Uh, Yanma, I'd say it's probably the best Pokemon in here, so definitely glad I get that. You know, I was thinking to myself earlier today, like, you know, every, like, I've heard, like, multiple YouTubers say that if you're doing a, like a full on like Pokemon series with uh like bios and like heavy editing and stuff, then the Great Marsh is like the it's the ultimate challenge of uh of your let's play. Like it's like the hardest area to go through. And I was like, oh I can't be that bad. Guys, I've had so many tech problems today. Like, there's a screen reflection problem this morning, but, uh, so, like, I waited, and then, like, I was super tired, and, like, I know if I record videos while I'm tired, I'll just, they just won't be good. <laughs> and so, 
I waited. I mean, I slept for a few hours, and then I woke up and like I didn't have enough storage to record, and then I ran out of storage, and then my phone fell while recording, and it was. It's been. It's been a tough. It's been a tough day, a tough tough day and a half. But I have recorded the. Ooh, green shard. I've recorded the green shard. I've recorded the audio for the video this Friday. It's not going to be Pokemon Platinum. It's going to be something different. If you didn't see my update video, I'll uh, put a little card up in the corner for you to go and watch it. Oh. Let's see. There's a Pokeball right here. I'm trying to think if there's... Were there any TMs here? No. Um... Uh, I will make it out of here alive. Oh, the bug. Oh, the bug. All right. Let's not make the mis that mistake again. Come this way. What do you have to say? Fix up Jenga Safari game. I don't collect shards, so you can have it. Oh, blue shard. Convenient. See, I got about, about 100 steps left. Quick, quick, out in the sticks, to and fro we go, we're quick. If you're thinking about going deep into the marsh, I recommend you take the Great Marsh Quick Trams. I guess they're pretty quick. But are they Jesse quick? Uh, let's see, there's another item up there. I think this one's, this is a good one, this is a good one, I can feel it. It's actually a great one, ha 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 ha, game, you're so funny. Um, let's see... Now I know in the, in the after game there's a lot of new Pokemon that are available here, like one example is Shroomish. So I think this is the area where I first caught a Shroomish, which I thought was really interesting. Which I never understood what type it was until I found out it was just just normal gra grass type. Um, let's see if I can catch this Skaroopy. One, two, three, a. All right. Well, as much as I would love to explore every, <laughs> I'm stuck in my head. As much as I would love to explore every inch of this place and show you every item, this video has gone on way too long, so I'm going to hit the retire button. I had about 30 steps left. So, how many Pokemon did you catch in your Safari game? At least five? I uh, yup. You've done that alright. Isn't that a something? Well, here you are then. The PokeJap matchup checker. Awesome, let's go ahead and add that to our Poketch. And I guess that's our prize for doing well in the Safari game. But yeah, you guys know I don't like to do super long videos because of course I feel like it's not an efficient usage of, I guess, your guys' time. Like, I don't want to waste your guys' time and spend a bunch of time on something when I know that it, the majority of stuff in this game can be like split off into about 15 minute parts. That's where I like to keep the videos. But, um, I'm trying to think, there's something else that I might want to show. Uh, this is the team that I'm going to go with into the gym. I recommend having one electric type and one grass type. Uh, yeah, Tangela is good. If you, if you caught a Shinx in the beginning of the game, that one will work pretty well. Um, and I mean... Sharon is an electric type that has levitate, which is very rare. So I'm probably just gonna use Sharon for the majority of it. Then have Popo sub in like when I need her assistance. But that is it. My name is Speedak Podiete, but you can call me Speed for short. And next time around, it's time to finish what we came here for. We're gonna make some heads roll. All right, cue the end screen. It just doesn't have the same ring to it. Cue the end card. Thank you.